start and then we wing it. All right. Cool. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to talk about uh, Viagra, the biggest, uh, the, the, the largest uh, uh, cyber criminal spam botnet there is, uh, that I know of, it, of at least. And we're going to start, first of all, I want to say that I'm really excited to be here. It's like a everlasting dream of mine to be in DerbyCon. So thank you very much for having me here. Second of all, um, we're going to start with a little demo. I need a volunteer from the crowd to test these uh, counterfeit Viagra. Anyone? <laughs> no? Okay, fine, I'll take one. <laughs> Yesterday you tried to offer them to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it takes about 25 minutes to 30 minutes to take effect. And that's exactly the time we have for the talk, so I think we'll be fine, or else it's, it will become awkward. <laughs> Um, okay, so I am Kobe. Uh, I used to work as a penetration tester and a developer. Uh, right now I work as a security researcher for a company called Imperva. Uh, we specifically are located in Israel. Uh, my division is in charge of uh, the SaaS solution called Encapsula. Uh, this is my uh, social, uh, social uh, information. And if you don't quite catch my accent, it's Israeli. Uh, if uh, I'm sorry about that, but if you c could uh, withstand Gal Gadot's acting in Wonder Woman, uh, I mean accent in Wonder Woman, uh, then I think you'd be uh, okay with my accent. So, as I'm notoriously known for my crude sense of humor, my boss told me that I can't have too many dick jokes here. So, uh, pardon the pun, but I'm gonna fish, finish quick and uh, let you see uh, about three memes I'm found on the internet, and that's it. Uh, there's the first one. Uh, the second one. <laughs> and the third one. That's my favorite, if you like interracial. Um, so our story begins with this specific molecule. It's called sildenafil citrate. That's the active ingredient in Viagra. Uh, it was invented by, the, by a bunch of scientists in Pfizer. Uh, at first, they, st they tried to uh, uh, create a cure for uh, blood pressure and angina, uh, but in vivo clinical trials have shown that it didn't quite work like they expected, but the test subjects were really happy to see them. So they have decided to use that to treat uh, erectile dysfunction instead. Uh, a little bit about the history of Viagra. It was patented back in uh, 1996. Then it was uh, in right back then they were already starting to make generic uh, uh, replacements for that. Uh, it was invalidated in 2013 in uh, Canada, uh, which sort of gave validation to generic companies that were uh, producing those uh, 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 other drugs and to counterfeit manufacturers because they could come up to you and say, uh, I'm not selling you fake Viagra, I'm just selling you, selling you some generic uh, substance. Well, essentially what they're selling you is just some counterfeit drug from China or India or whatever. Um, it will also, also expired at that time at uh, Europe, the European Union. And in three years, it's going to expire world, worldwide and then you'll be able to sell your counterfeit drugs to anyone. Uh, a little bit about the economy of the uh, Viagra industry. Um, take, for example, this uh, famous stallion. This is the most expensive stallion uh, to date. It costs $70 million. Does anybody know uh, the name of the horse? Come on, I'll give you a t-shirt. No, no, no. His name is Fuseichi uh, Pegasus. Um, you will need 22. Blah. 22 of that horse, 22 times that horse to uh, get the annual income uh, of Viagra. That's 1.5 million. On the other hand, if you have 1.5 million worth of Viagra, you probably just need one stallion and just dope it up. <laughs> um, back to our industry, uh, the salary for one software engineer is uh, $100,000 a year. You will need this amount of software engineers to uh, cover for the yearly revenue of Viagra. Just kidding, twice as much. Um, now, the top selling drugs, the top selling drug is not Viagra. Viagra is just the 40, in the 40th place, $1.5 uh, billion a year. Uh, there are many, many more uh, drugs that are uh, uh, giving better income. 
but Viagra is the noisiest when it comes to spam. Like uh, just a few of them is, are even in, in spam campaigns at all. 10% of the pharma market, according to uh, the World Health Organization, is counterfeit drugs. That means, and I'm talking about all the drugs, not just Viagra. That's 21 billion revenue a year. Uh, according to the Interpol, uh, one million of the death, one million, there's a one million death toll per year uh, from indu uh, using counterfeit drugs. That sounds like a huge number to me. It just sounds a bit too big, so I would take it with a grain of salt. A, they have the incentive to inflate that number. B, it's the Interpol. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. When uh, GlovMed spam it got raided, they found out they uh, uh, had a, a 67.7 million dollar uh, income in 2009. And when Rx promotion got raided, uh, you saw 12.8 million. No wonder that this is the number one uh, uh, spamming campaign in the world, according to Spam House. Uh, Canadian pharmacy is like that's that's the name that they're using. It's not Canadian pharmacy themselves. So now that you know that Viagra pays a lot of money, you want to get in. You want to take the blue pill and get into the Viagra matrix and start selling yourself. So let's get the basis. Um, you can get this uh, uh, specific e-commerce solution uh, uh, from many places. Usually it's in Russian, but not all the time. Um, the, the client side is translated to many languages, so don't worry. You just need to Google Translate your way into installing this thing. They offer th uh, 30 to 50% uh, commission. Uh, they give you templates, banners, all the, all the bells and whistles, and you get uh, full API support out of the bat, uh, without paying anything. So you don't need to meddle with the uh, CSS, HTML, uh, all that stuff. You just plug and play. Uh, now, when you read the about page, you see that those guys know exactly where the traffic is coming from. They're saying most of our traffic is coming from email dispatches, which, just, which is just a fancy name for spam. And second of all, they're saying uh, anonymity is guaranteed. Why would you need anonymity if you're not doing something shady? Um, now, about the templates. This is one template they offer. Uh, this one is for Canadian Pharmacy and another one for uh, United Pharmacy, so we don't need to get a graphic design guy. Plus, you can see the bottom guy is uh, very happy because he has a full head of hair. Believe me, I know. Uh, <laughs> the, there's another one for CVS Pharmacy if you like to uh, uh, sell to Americans. Uh, if you would like the Indian crowd better, there is uh, uh, Indian Pharmacy. And there's the one I like the most, which is Erection Pack. <laughs> and there are many, many more. You can choose whichever. Now, now that you have your spam site, uh, your uh, uh, drug site online, and you want to sell to people, you have the whole, whole e-commerce solution. You need to get people to your site. How how will you do that? You have two options. You can even mix and match between the two. One of them is using spam mail. The other one is using SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's like different ways to get your uh, site on the top list in Google and other search engines that don't matter. Uh, <laughs> you have two variants of SEO. One is white hat and the other one is black hat. The thing is, with white hat SEO, you go to a legitimate company that does SEO. Uh, you pay them, they backlink to you, they do blog posts, it takes time, it's cumbersome. Sometimes uh, you need to pay even more than you would pay for a black hat guy. And at the bottom line, your site is doing something shady. So you're not going to be online for a lot of time. You want to make your buck. You want to be uh, at the top of the line real fast and then like throw it away once you did your, uh, uh, got your cash. Uh, one instance of Black Hat SEO that we had saw on our network and analyzed was this uh, sort of botnet that said a user agent that had an MSSQL injection in it. As you can see, uh, the injection itself searches for uh, any table that is not system, then it goes every 10 records, you can see the modulo 10, and enters the backlink to their site, selling thyroxine, okay, and some other drug. Um, as you can see, the fourth, the fourth uh, uh, link at Google, the first page, is the thyroxine uh, uh, link, so it worked. Uh, and the HTML in the title kind of gives you a hint that either you're dealing with a really, really bad coder or a hacker that does black hat SEO. Now let's go for the second variant that we've seen. 
The second is uh, the spammer option. When you do spam, you need a domain to send people to. Uh, you need the email list, which are readily uh, available for free or you can buy for really cheap. And you need an email server to dispatch those emails to those guys. So, uh, and that, that can be done using open uh, SMTP relays, cracked SMTP relays, IMAP, uh, cracked IMAP, or cracked servers that support uh, uh, send mail. So, our guys use that variant, uh, cracking web servers. And they implanted this uh, famous web show. It's called WSO. You can find it on uh, GitHub if you want. Use it at your own risk. Um, so the payload they sent, then then after they installed this backdoor, they sent another payload. This is the payload using the uh, PHP action. The payload itself was Base64 encoded. That It was decoded and written into disk. And this was the custom shell that they uh, passed in the PHP action. Everybody follows? Okay, this uh, specific, we nicknamed this specific uh, 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 web shell, Matryoshka, which is a kind of a mix between Base64 and Matryoshka, which is uh, the Russian uh, doll that's inside the doll, that's inside the doll. Why is that? It's because uh, the payload passed to this web shell is the spam, the spam post itself. Uh, there's a key, which is the password, and the value, which is... Base 64 decoded, then base 64 decoded, then base 64 decoded, then base 64 decoded, then you. You're a smart guy, you're getting a t-shirt. Then base 64 decoded, then base 64 decoded again, then split by a pipe into four fields, uh, base 64 decoded three more times, and uh, the, the, the resulting value gives you the email and whom to send the spam to. Okay? That the reason they did that is because usually when a researcher sees a base something that looks like base 64 encoded uh, encoding uh they will automatically just try to decode it maybe once maybe twice maybe reverse and then decode uh, and if they still see gibberish uh those guys were optimistic and thought we would give up uh the thing is there's a small caveat small small caveat with using so much base 64 decode uh, and that's overdosing on it if you use base 64 encoding too much, there's a slight issue. I will show it right away. But first, let's dig in and see uh, how base 64 encoding works. So what essentially happens in base 64 is it, that it takes uh, eight bit uh, characters, splits them into groups of six. In those groups of six, uh, it gets numbers between the values of zero to 63. Then it uses those values in the lookup table to get uh, ASCII characters, A to Z, 0 to 6, plus or slash. Uh, it takes those characters, creates a string, and writes it back as ASCII. Uh, however, there's one letter, V, ironically, like Viagra, uh, that is special. The ASCII code for it is 0101010. And the base 64 code is 010101. You are the base 64 guy. Do you know what happens when you base 64 encode uh, v, capital V? What you get? Capital V again. Then you're stuck on capital V. No matter how many times you will uh, encode your uh, uh, character, you will get capital V. There are three more, uh, three more letters, capital T, capital U, and capital W that when you encode them, you get to capital V, and you're still stuck. Then, there's another group of characters that needs two hops to get stuck on capital V. Further on, until you cover all the ASCII. We've created a, 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 a Python script that shows how many hops you need to cover all the ASCII to get to capital V when base 64 encoding. And we found out that at most you need uh, five hops to get capital V if you're encoding a character. The same goes for uh, lowercase m, then 0, then w, etc., etc. And then what we got is a fi fixed prefix. So these guys were so worried about the uh, uh, not getting caught that they actually got themselves caught. It had an amazing entropy, like the, the password was different for each server and the payload itself because you're sending an email to someone else and the, and the, and the information inside, everything changed. We couldn't catch them. But the fact that they used base 64 encoded so many times, they gave it the signature. They gave it like this little present. Thank you, Ukrainians. <laughs> okay, so what else do you need? You don't need a single domain. You need more than one domain. Because there's this thing called 
a spam list, spam blacklist. Once you send a domain once or twice in a spam mail, people get on it and they add it to this list and then you get it with the junk mail and no one reads your email. So you need many domains. But those many domains, they get fast into the, uh, uh, into the list and they cost plenty of money. And even if you can resolve, you will still get in the blacklist uh, pretty fast. So there's another cool thing they did, which is a mechanism they developed to uh, bypass the, uh, the filters when you are still blacklisted as a domain. How did they do that? They used the WSO shell again, but this time the payload that they passed was this uh, specific PHP that what it did essentially is write an HD access file into the hacked web server, which was a legitimate server altogether. Like no matter which page you will go, as long as it was the site's page, you will get a legitimate page. Everything is okay. But once you get to a non-existent page, let's say uh, dogfood.com slash abc123, you will get a 404 page that had the domain that they wanted. And then you get redirected to the Cialis sales site, CL, uh, Viagra sales site. Okay, they sell Cialis, Viagra, uh, Elvitra, everything. Um, this is the basic infrastructure they uh, have. One domain got hacked and had the Batryoshka, the Base64, Base64 payload. It was sending the spam email, and inside of it, there was this link going to a 404 page on a legitimate domain, other domain they hacked. You, sometimes it was on the same site even. The unsuspecting client would get the email with that link and get redirected to the spam site. Pretty simple. This is the uh, infrastructure. Um, we've seen that a lot of the uh, hacked sites that uh, did th that sent those payloads were around the uh, Russian Federation, Indonesia, and Egypt. And surprisingly, Canadian pharmacy uh, copycats did not get out of Canada almost at all. And so the same goes for uh, the United States. And it's something that we rarely see because the United States has a lot of computers and usually the spread is quite even. This is uh, this gives you a notion of how many IPs the, we saw, the hacked servers. And again, this is just a domain list we saw that was uh, bought in a single day. So if every single domain costs like 10 bucks, they've wasted 350 bucks just on those domains, just to get through a, a spam, a spam filters. <coughs> that means they are making a lot of money. They don't care to do the extra investment uh, because there's such big revenue. So, uh, by the way, if you want this list, uh, the, the extended list, I can, I will gladly give it to you. Just come to me after the, uh, the talk. So to wrap this up, uh, it's interesting uh, to see that uh, uh, those guys, uh, how much uh, you can see, how many hackers you can see that go and uh, uh, put forward the effort when they see there's money in, uh, in a certain business. Um, Second of all, sometimes uh, it's an example of sometimes how it uh, how it's it, it's it's fascinating to see that once uh, someone hacks the site, sometimes they don't uh, use the the breach to get uh, the database credentials or uh, information from the site. The the hack itself is not meant to get stuff from the site, but the, it's only to utilize the site for something else, be it. Uh, in this instance, it's uh, spam. In other instances, it's DDoS or uh, mining. And we see it like a new phenomenon. Uh, not so new. It's like for a decade now. But uh, uh, appearing more and more. Because once you uh, compromise a site and you do something to it, the person owning the site will get rid of you faster. But if you're making uh, uh, money by proxy, uh, maybe the compromise will uh, uh, be a lot, a lot more worth it. A lot worth uh, more of your time. And there's a time where a hacker's paranoia can shoot them in the foot. And uh, that's what I've just showed you with the Base64 encoding. Whew. Thank you. Anybody uh, who won or wants t-shirts can come afterwards. I left it in my hotel. But uh, just ping me or add me on Twitter and, I, uh, and just tell me that you want a t-shirt. I will give you. It's a cool one. Death to Didos. Who's next? It's just open. Any questions, by the way? I have five more minutes till the Viagra takes effect. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not uh, condoning. It's just uh, for headaches because I have a hangover.
Nothing? Okay, then thank you. Wow. It's funny yesterday. It's funny yesterday you were like, hey, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know what you just offered me, but.